What's up guys, I'm the Russell Gamer, welcome back to Let's Play Time Century 2 Special Edition, and on this one, we're going to be starting Rose's Route, to get Rose's Ending, here on, here on the Time Century 2 Special Edition, so, we're going to go back to where we had to help people, if you guys remember, the last time we, had, we helped Kyo in the machine shop, we're going to help Rose. Hmm. Rose, is there anything I can help you with? Huh? Well, actually, I could use an extra pile of hands in the experimental lab. That is, if you really don't mind. Of course not. I know there's not a lot I can do to help, but if you need anything, then... After a few seconds, her cheeks turning a shade of pink, Rose nodded thoughtfully. Okay, then. Follow me. Without another word, Rose turned and led the way out of the time window room. I followed a short distance behind, and we soon found ourselves in the experimental lab. All right, so now what? Well, creating the trekking die shouldn't be a problem. We have plenty of materials that should be able to trip the time window sensors. The real problem, as I see it, is creating an anesthetic that can both be released into the air and would be potent enough to render Bunny and Mizuki unconscious fast enough. We'll likely be using this in the open air, so it would dissipate quickly under normal circumstances. And another problem is with the way time travel stimulates the brain. There's a real risk that it would take a long while for the anesthetic to in incapacitate them. On the other hand, if the anesthetic is too potent, it could be toxic, dangerously so. Hmm. Kenji, could you fetch me the halothane and the mex meth methoxy prop propane? I feel so stupid. They're in the refrigeration unit over there. Okay, sure. Um, halopane and... Halothane and meth oxypropane. Uh, don't worry, they're marked. You shouldn't have any trouble finding them. Don and Tadeus made my way over to a small refrigerator, which I presumed was used for storing chemical compounds. Fortunately, Rose was right, and it wasn't hard for me to find the required chemicals. I quickly scanned the contents and made my way back to her with them. Here you go. Thanks. Rose returned her attention to a nearby piece of equipment, and I was definitely noticing my lack of useful skills. I tripped about on my feet for a moment before trying to fill my time in a different way. So anyway, Rose, there's been something I've been wondering about. Oh? What is it? It's just, how did you get into fencing? I mean, there are still some holes in my memory, but... No, that's alright. I understand. Actually, it was my father who encouraged me to take up fencing. Part of it was because it was something of a tradition in his family, and also because he wanted me to keep active, stay in good shape. Yeah, I need to heed those words. I see. Did you, hear, did you have any trouble with it, or...? At first, yes. But then I suppose that's much like any other skill, nobody's an expert at first. It takes a great deal of time and effort to refine one's ability. That's some pretty good advice right there. But I didn't mind. As a matter of fact, my father found a way to make it quite fun for me. Really? How did he do that? Rose struggled when she began working with the chemicals I had gotten for her. We used to play like we were knights. Dueling for the king and queen, he made this small box castle with a toy king and queen for us to fight in front of and bow to. You know, that reminds me of the time we went to the Viking Festival in York, England. My father crafted a small suit of armor with a toy sword and shield for the occasion. I remember going after all these big men dressed as Vikings, yelling and waving my sword at them. Rose gave another chuckle at this, shaking her head as if in amazement at her younger years. Is that why you designed your time suit to look like a suit of armor? Why, yes, actually. I know it might seem strange, but going back and forth in time and seeing and exploring the past, in a way, it made me feel very much like a little girl again. And the image of time tra a time-traveling knight, it appealed to me for some reason, and... Oops! In a moment of distraction, Rose allowed one of the containers to slip from her grasp and go crashing down on the floor. A plume of noxious vapors erupted from the broken container, causing the English girl to begin coughing uncontrollably. I hurriedly pulled the collar up 
of my shirt up over my mouth and nose and before wrapping my free arm around Rose's frame. As she continued to cough, tears flowing from her eyes, I dragged her away from the broken container and hurriedly escorted her out of the hall. Once we were away from the noxious vapors, I assisted the staggering Rose to the far wall. She rested against a heaving breath after deep breath. I lowered the collar of my shirt and looked at the English girl in the eyes. Are you alright? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Just a bit dizzy more than anything. Do you need to sit down? Hmm? No, I'm, I'm alright. I just need to take a few breaths. Clear my head a bit. With every breath Rose took, her chest pressed hard against the tight, fitted fabric of her dress. I couldn't help but swallow as I gazed down the chasm of her cleavage. Kenji? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Rose. I wasn't trying to. I didn't mean... Thank you. For what? You know, for helping me get out of there? Uh, oh, right, that. But I'm not sure what you, were, what you were thanking me for. I mean, you probably wouldn't have dropped that thing if I hadn't distracted you. It wasn't your fault. I was the one who got careless. And besides, I really do appreciate you getting me out of there the way you did. I still wasn't sure that I deserved such praise, but still the gratitude being shown to me by Rose was enough to color my cheeks. I gave an embarrassed chuckle and rubbed the back of my head looking down, and once again found myself staring into Rose's cleavage. I found myself wondering what I should say or do next if I should... Hey, what happened? And what's that smell? Huh? Oh, I see. Decided to take a little break, did you? An instant later, we jumped apart and we were waving our hands and dying. Kyo, wait, it's not what you're thinking. There was an accident in the lab. Kenji got me out and I just needed a minute to recover. Catch my breath. That's all. Uh-huh, sure. But seriously, you two, just go back to whatever what you were doing and pretend that I'm not even here. As if we could. <laughs> Kenji, I'm sure that the fumes have dissipated. Let's get back to the lab and run the fence and try and get something done. Uh, sure. Okay, I understand. I guess it would be pretty awkward doing that in front of an audience. Kyo? Deciding that I would rather avoid throwing fuel on this particular fire, I kept my mouth shut as I followed Rose into the lab. She continued to blush and act flustered the entire time we worked. And to be honest, I don't think I was doing much better as my cheeks continued to burn. So that's going to conclude th this part of uh, Rose's route. If you guys liked this video, be sure you slam that like button, like a champ, and if you guys want to see the rest of Rose's route right here on Time Tension 2 Special Edition, you know the two ways you got to do it. You got to leg drop the subscribe button and hit that bell icon to turn on notifications so that way you never miss out on another one of my videos here on my channel. So with that being said, I am your friendly neighborhood wrestling gamer, and I will see you next time right here on WGS TV. Bye guys!